In this example, we're going to look at three-dimensional vectors and resolving those three-dimensional vectors into forces. In this example, shown on canvas as example 3, we're given two forces, F1 and F2, that are applied to a hook in non-planar directions. We want to find the resultant force in Cartesian vector form. We're going to use geometry and trigonometry to write F1 and F2 in Cartesian vector format, or in the component format in our I, J, and K directions and perspectives. Then we'll add the two forces by adding the X and Y components. So the first thing we want to do is sketch the system as we've done in the past. This is a little harder in three dimensions, so I suggest you start by positioning your x, y, and z axes first, then beginning to draw your dimensions, shown here in green, and finally adding the force vectors after that. So in this case, F1 is 500 pounds, and our F2 force is equal to 800 pounds. The force for F1, we're given information that the force exists only in the YZ plane, so it has no X parameter. That's going to make our calculations a little bit simpler and very similar, similar to our coplanar evaluations. The force for triangular methods in isolation has a hypotenuse of 5, a rise of 3 in the z direction, and a run of 4 in the y direction, which will allow us to break that into its component forces in the y and z direction. Force 2 is downward force of 800 pounds. This force exists in all three coordinate systems, so we have to have an I, J, and the third K position for this force to be completely resolved. We're also given angles for this in relationship to the different planes. So it's 30 degrees from the x-axis in the xy plane and 45 degrees from the z-axis in the z-plane. Again, these angles will allow us to describe its position, its downward position, in relationship to the origin of our x, y, and z axis. And we position our origin where the two forces meet at the point of the hook. It might be helpful to think of these angles as a surface plane angle in the x, y surface and also a position surface associated with the angle of the vector itself. That is the, the force vector, F2. So we're going to start by resolving F1 into its component coordinates. Here we see a drawing of just the F1 force, and it's a coplanar force, so it's exactly like we've done previously. It exists only in the XY plane, or sorry, ZY plane. Its force in the X direction is zero. Its force in the Y direction is 500, so the magnitude of the force, pounds, times three fifths, which is the rise, sorry, in the y direction is four fifths the run over the hypotenuse of five, which yields 400 pounds. In the z direction, let me correct myself this time, hopefully I get it right, it's 500 times the rise, the direction 
local value in the z direction, which is the value of 3 over a hypotenuse value of 5. And that's going to be equal to 300 pound force in the z direction. Next, we need to resolve the forces for F2, which is a three-dimensional force. So we're going to be looking at these in all three dimensions in the Cartesian system. Again, where our origin is the point where the three axes intersect at x equal to 0, y equal to 0, and z equal to 0. We're going to start by defining the various forces <coughs> in our system. But first we're going to write the F1 force in its Cartesian coordinates in the I, J, and K systems. So the I coordinate, which still corresponds with the X axis, is 0. The force that corresponds with the Y axis is 400J, and the force that corresponds with the Z axis, the component force, is 300K. And that's going to describe the force in a three-dimensional position. Then we'll use this to add the forces later on after we re resolve the force F2 in its three-dimensional position. So it may be helpful to do another sketch of just the force F2 in its position, as we've seen here. We're going to define then some additional values, F2Z, which is the surface force, or sorry, F2 prime, which has the apostrophe on it which is the surface force that acts along the surface xy. So this has the angle of 30 degrees from the x-axis. Another way to think about this, if we draw a rectangle box that represents the system, the F2 prime force is the component that lies along the top portion of the box. The side portion of the box nearest us is going to be F2Z representing the Z axis. So we'll break the F2 force down into the components that act along the surface area, F2 prime, and the component that acts along the side of our box in the vertical direction, F2Z. The F2Z force is equal to the magnitude of the force, minus 800 newtons, multiplied by the sine of the angle opposite it, which is the 45 degree angle in the Z plane. So we can resolve the Z component of this force very quickly along the force acting along the side of the box nearest us. And that turns out to be minus 465.7 pounds. The F2 prime force, the force along the Y and Z surface again is the magnitude of the force 800 but multiplied by the cosine of 45 degrees and that's the prime force is going to be acting along that top surface and since we have a cosine of 45 degrees and a sine of 45 degrees they have the same magnitude of 565.7 pounds this F2 force along the surface is now a coplanar force, and we can resolve this farther into its X and Y components, which would be one side of the top of the box and the other side of the top of the box as we look at the green box pictured in the image. So this is a coplanar force. In the X direction, we have F2 sub X, the force that represents the X component of this force, and it's 565.7, the force that we found along the surface, multiplied by the cosine of the opposite angle, 
which is the 30 degree angle, the surface angle given from the origin. That force then, when we do the math, turns out to be 489.9 pounds. And similarly, we can resolve the component in the y direction, the other force along the top surface of the box, and like the last uh, sign, since this is in the opposite, the angle's in the opposite position, it's going to be the magnitude of the force, 565.7, times the sine of 30 degrees. And that's going to equal 282.8 pounds. Now we've resolved the F2 force into its three-dimensional locations, where the force in the X direction is 489.9 pounds along the X direction, so that makes it the I component of this force. The force along the Y axis, running from the middle of the screen towards the right-hand side of the screen, is 282.8 pounds. And that's the J component, since it corresponds to the Y axis. And the force corresponding to the Z axis is what we found along the side of our box, the minus 565.7 pounds, and that's our K component. We've now resolved both forces, F1 and F2, into their I, J, and K components. So we can now add these components just like we added our coplanar com components in just the X and Y direction, but now we have a Z direction as well. So we add these components, and the resultant force is going to be the sum of the two forces, F1 plus F2. Rewriting F1 and F2 from our previous work here, we simply add these components so that the resultant force is going to be the sum of the I components, which is 490 pounds in the X direction adding our 400 J and 282 J is going to give us 683 pounds for the J component And then finally we add our Z axis force acting along the Z axis. We have a positive value and a negative value. The negative value is larger, so we end up with minus 266 pounds of force in the Z direction for a K component of this force. We now have a resultant force that's completely described in space in the IJ and K components.